previously on Jetstream. Pull him into the hut and gun him. It solves your problem, he's dead. To fly and fight. Come on, you can get him. Pull him. Take power. Pull. 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 Patience, patience. The rookies get their first taste of air combat. We got him. We got him. Come on, Pepper. Come on. There we go. There. Sweet. It's how you maneuver the jet to put yourself in a position to kill. Learning the deadly business of dog fighting. Fight in a hornet, kind of like a knife fight in an alley. You'll run in there, try to kill the opponent, and you'll be out of there before anyone else knows what's going on. And bringing out the killer instinct. Shoot him with something. You have the gun out, and you just pull out the bullets, okay? The pressure's on at fighter pilot school. She only got one weapon off all day? Yeah. Wow, okay. And they're running out of second chances. You know, you got to perform, because if you don't, then one step closer to being uh, sent on your way. It's the final term at the fighter pilot school in Cold Lake, Alberta. Six months down, three to go. I'll, uh, Excuse me. Give me about 20 minutes to get my shit together. Right? <laughs> Veterans have a name for this stage of the course. They call it the dream killer. You come in here all full of piss and vinegar, and you're a rock star, and then five months into the course, you're like, whoa, is this ever going to end? For the six rookies who've made it this far, the good news is it will end. It's just that it might kill them first. Oh, man. If you, if you don't have no, I'm, I'm good. It's just that I could have used about four hours more sleep. We go home, we study, barely get enough sleep, come in, do the same thing, you know, and it's exhausting. Everybody's going for the control position and gun the guy or both guys engage defensive uh, flare. And their stamina is bleeding away just when they're starting the hardest missions. It's called the dream killer because on almost every course, somebody goes down here. And the squadron veterans are already laying bets. In my opinion, I see three of them that have some difficulties. You need some pushing every now and then. And we see three of them that seem to grasp it fairly easily. Captain Tristan McKee. Unquestionably the least likely looking fighter pilot on base. I remember the first time I met him, I said, how's this guy going to be a fighter pilot? He looks like a scared bird or something. That's good. <laughs> but actually, he's very methodical. Very, uh, just progresses along quietly in the background. He's a by-the-book kind of guy. But so far, it's working for him. Above average. So it's good. It's a good trip. Above average, I'm really happy with that. Captain Yannick Jobin. He not only looks the part, he owns it. Perfect. He's strong. He's very professional, and he's not, I'm going to be the top fighter pilot on this course. There's no ego in that guy. He's very to the business, and I like that. Lieutenant Dave McLeod, the guy who started the course a month behind everyone else, has made up ground in a hurry. Tickler started out strong. You know, he came through the gates late, but overall, he's a pretty solid performer, uh, learns very quickly. Dave has eaten it up. He works his butt off to catch up with everybody else, and today he's in the lead. And you know what? I'm particularly proud of him. Yeah. So that's the top half of the class as the instructors see it. What about the other half? Lieutenant Seamus Allen. If there's a wild card in the group, he's it. How is he? Out of character. 
Not landing. He can fly. He's got good hands and feet. But he's just prone to making those one or two stupid errors in a trip. I remember when I first met him, I thought to myself, how am I ever going to authorize this guy to go carry live bombs out on the range? Stand by, request initial vector. Disregard. <laughs> Erratic, maybe, but Seamus is hanging in. It's the last two who are really slipping. Captain Tim Coffin. A strong start, but now he's starting to struggle. Tim is very cautious. He's, uh, if I just fly corner speed and I manage my airplane and watch my fuel, I won't even worry about the guy out there who's, oh, I think he's gunning me right now. Oh, well, that's not acceptable. He has the desire, but it's getting so dynamic now that he's having a hard time keeping up. He's not in the boat. He's water skiing behind the boat right now. And finally, Captain Riel Erickson. She's had trouble on every phase of the course so far, and she's failed a couple of missions in recent weeks. Not a good sign. If she has a bad trip, it tends to magnify itself, and then you have to sit her down and go, relax, focus. And as soon as she does that, OK and she's back on the track, but she tends to get off track a fair bit. And right now, Riel's so far off track, she's beginning to wonder if she's really cut out to be a fighter pilot. Crap, this is hard. I've been scared. It would be so easy, like, you know, with my degree and everything. Man, I could, I could turn around and do something else, and it would, you know, it'd be a lot easier than this. It's a bad time to be having second thoughts. Because this phase of fighter school is a bear. Air combat maneuvers, or ACM, is the most realistic combat scenario they've faced so far. There will be not one, but two other planes to deal with. Here's what they can expect. Lead, the Blue Jet, and the Bandit, Red, square off for a fight. The student in the Green Jet climbs up about a mile above the fight. His job is to identify the Bandit, tip his nose in, and shoot him. But without color coding, try distinguishing friend from foe, what they call who's who in the zoo. Captain Tristan McKee has soaked up his brief and studied everything there is on air combat maneuvers. But he has no idea what he's in for. They don't understand the way the time compresses with all the things that they're doing. They're flying downrange, they have a hard enough time seeing you, they're talking on the radio, they're looking at the radar, they're trying to interpolate things three-dimensionally. I'm starting to sweat just talking about it, but they're probably going to start sweating and getting a little overloaded and a little behind the aircraft. This will be what they call a two versus one fight. Lead. Tristan. Bandit. This is Tristan's view as they set up for the fight. Even on a clear day, the decision on who to shoot at these distances can be anything but clear. Accelerating for 400. We're at 17,000. Okay, shot. Who's who in the zoo, dude? Translation. Do you know who's lead and who's the bad guy? Alpha 5 1, hard right, bandit right. Fuck you, Deli. Tristan rolls nose up over the fight. There's one of them. Upside down, working the radio. 5 1, signal circle, southeast. 5 2, press. 
trying not to shoot lead. No shot. Five no shot repositioning. It's easy to forget little things, like flying the plane. When Tristan lets his speed drop this far, it's low comedy for his instructor. <laughs> because at these speeds, you're not fighting, you're just falling. Uh, I lost some money, One of the ways to avoid sending 300 bullets through your lead's canopy is to talk to him, confirm where the bandit is, now Tristan is so overloaded, he's blurting out ten words for the work of two. Uh, is the one that is still turning, not hold out, from our perspective. He's closer to us, right? Yeah, closer okay. to us. Meanwhile, Tristan's lead is watching, frustrated, fighting on his own, and waiting for help. Oh, where's the shot? Where's the shot? Bandit's nose is high. I'm repositioning. Oh. Bingo. Repositioning. Bingo. Let's go. Tristan is still hanging around about a mile overhead and still overloaded. Okay, roll off the top. And it's about to land him in a dangerous place. Tristan kicks the rudder around, threatening to send the jet spiraling out of control. There's one of them that there's... Watch the rudder, watch the rudder. There's two. Watch the rudder. Watch the rudder. Alpha 500 South Man. But he snaps it back under control. Alpha 500 South Man. Eagle, Eagle. 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 and finally gets a good shot off. I'll find one turning. Fuzzy turning. Finally turning. Back on the ground, Tristan's instructors dissect his performance before they're even in the door. He does all this fight to go up here and then he's lost you. And then he comes back there was this the one big level. rudder oscillation like this to keep you guys visual. And we're like 100 knots up at the top. It's like, oh, <laughs> it was almost ready to go. And the one fight, he comes right through the middle of it. And I'm like, you know what? I have, I should just haul on the stick here and just gun his ass yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll save that for Tristan's debrief. I don't know if I described it to you. The difference between regular flying like airliner flying and uh, A to B flying and all that, and, and fighter pilot is, as a fighter pilot, I don't view myself as much as, as a pilot as more of a weapon systems manager and a tactician. That means I fight. However, at certain stages, the operation of my aircraft has to become number one, okay? I.e., like an engine flames out or whatever, and when I'm 68 knots at the top, that is frickin' slow, okay? 68 knots, I think it's Cessna stalls at that speed, okay? And, what you do and when you try to maneuver an F-18 at that speed... And I can feel the jet go sideways, and guess what we're leading into? We're leading into a whoop, and then a whoop, 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 one of those, like a full-up frickin' departure, okay? It's called the falling leaf, and it was the first big danger they were warned about. The jet starts slamming from side to side, dropping like a brick. And it can be fatal. I see problems on subsequent ACMs if you don't up the ante quick. And I mean quick, okay? He's saying that Tristan could fail the next mission if he doesn't pick up his game. He gets a below average mark and a lesson. Just remember, it's not like the book. It's not like the book? Not really. The book describes various things, but those things don't really happen the same way the book says, because it's just so fluid and dynamic. All right, thanks. No problem. And it's that dynamic nature which will, in very short order, shoot down another of the group's star students. There's an expression that says you're always one flight away from the end of your career. No matter how hard you try, some things, it, it just doesn't matter. It's not good enough. All right, 
So mission objectives for today. Comms, mutual support, and great tactics. Okay, so what that comes Dave McLeod is about to head out for his first air combat maneuvers mission. That's what it may look like to you, but it looks to him like this and his big altitude thing. So if you just and when it's the squadron standards officer flying lead, you want to get it right. So when you roll out, you got to take a snapshot of what you see and go, okay, lead is in the south, the bandit's in the north. You do get up here, let's say, and you look down and you go, ah, ah I don't know who's who in the zoo. Okay, so what can you do? Uh, I need to, I know I need a status call. Mm -hmm. I need to make it easy for lead to give me a quick answer. Got the plan, now I just gotta make the plan work. We'll see about that one. <laughs> his nose may be why he got the call sign Tickler, but it's his flying that earned him the nickname Diamond Dave. The question is, can he keep the luster? Dave heads out with a simple plan, to keep the bad guy in his sights. Just to recage your head, comms, contracts, and game plan, okay? All right. Comms, communicate with lead. Contract, don't shoot lead. Game plan, try to stay one step ahead of the bad guy. You got the bandit on the right? Yeah, I am tally visual. Excellent. Stay that way all day, and we're gonna have a great trip, my friend. <laughs> that is my plan. Deep breath. This is fun, shit, man. Yeah, it's cool. It's <laughs> for you. Okay. All right. Kick his ass. Call it. Five two. ID hostile. Hostile. Make twenty one. Five two. Press. I want single circle in the south now. Even though one gray dot looks the same as another. Dave is certain he can tell which one is the bad guy and which one is his lead. The bandit's going to the west side now. Okay, I'm gonna wait for this next merge. Yep. And then I'm gonna pull that on the bandit. Good call. So Dave pulls the trigger. Five two, five two. A perfect shot. Valid. Valid. It means Diamond Dave has the kill. Five one, roll out there, Buck. But there's one little problem. Oh. What's that tell you? I shot the wrong guy. So. Terminating, terminating. Also known as friendly fire, or fratricide. Dave McLeod has the look of a man with some explaining to do. I'll be Owen flailing some beer. Shot twice. Like once wasn't bad enough. And stop. <clears throat> what did I say at this point? Have you got him? And you're like, I am tally visual. I am King freaking Kong. There's going to be some ass kicking coming here in a second. Where did we get our brains swapped here? Uh, when uh, Lead called his status with, the, with regards to North South. And I must have got that mixed up. Now, we told you in the brief hey, when you go over the top, look over your arse end there, and you should see the bandit being the farthest away guy. Your brain's still processing. Okay, 1% rule, I'm going over the top. I got some airspeed. All right, things are looking good. I see a couple airplanes do my thing. You look over. By this time, they've already gone through one complete iteration of the one circle fight. In other words, Lead and Bandit have swapped positions. Dave locks his weapons on the wrong guy. Assumptions, the mother of all ups. And you know what? You padlocked Lead the whole way through. So. Energy management, great. Timing, clear avenue of fire, spot on. That's all null and void if you shoot your lead, right? Okay, we're fighting the same airplane out there. You actually might find yourself overseas fighting against somebody else that's flying a similar airframe as you. A lot of airplanes, even though it looks painfully different in the cover of a magazine, will look a whole lot similar 
when you're actually wrapping it up in a fight. And you know what the beer ROE is, right? Uh, it's 240s for that, because I shot him twice. Yeah, that's expensive. You know what? There's a reason why it's 240s. Because you'd rather do that in training and buy booze than actually do it in war and kill somebody. That is really serious, serious shit. Okay? <laughs> On Dave's next attempt, a different twist. This time, it's the deputy commanding officer who'll be flying lead. Just wrap myself in good. I'm gonna take Tickler for a ride. And Spanky's not a guy you wanna cross. Students are told, don't waste time fighting. Get the kill quickly. And Dave's mission doesn't take long. If it went well, he may have redeemed himself. So, what'd you think? Overall, yeah. pretty good. Really? Yeah. Dave's backseat instructor has a bad feeling. You know, one, I wasn't sure if he'd maybe accidentally even shot you. Oops. We're looking at the bandit in the right hand turn going this way, and the PD box is pegged in the left corner, which is where you are. Sure enough, the tape showed Dave may not yet be a fighter pilot, but he is a serial killer. The second mission in a row, Dave shot his lead. And Spanky's none too pleased. You're offensive. You've got your nose pointed at him, but I think you're looking at this and you don't know who's who in this area. Am I right? I, think I knew who was who. I think it was just a slow getting from neuron A to neuron B. That's how you go from star status to Mark Mann in just two missions. So, Dave slapped with another booze penalty for being trigger happy, and Tristan with a bad case of overload. How come two of the leading students on course suddenly find the wheels coming off? Seasoned pilots have an expression for it. What we say is the bucket is full. You know, we all have a bucket. It's full of water, full of stuff that we're doing. And as we get busy, things start falling out of the bucket because we just can't keep up. Check that one. You know, what makes a good fighter pilot, it's, it's not the best hands and feet. It's not the best shooter. It's not the best personality. It's the ability to process information rapidly and make good decisions. But some things, even the best fighter pilot can't beat. And Mother Nature is one of them. In Cold Lake, Alberta, when the fog rolls in from the east, the odds of getting to fly go south. The weather was too bad for anybody to take off, so they canceled the whole morning. You're mentally prepared. You spent the last night, you know, studying and getting ready. And well, <laughs> there is a sexual analogy that could be used. Got all excited, worked up, ready to go. No release. <laughs> no satisfaction. By afternoon, the weather gods have decided to cut the rookies a break. Tim Coffin is the first one out, and he's got some catching up to do. In terms of weather, what you can anticipate out there, winds are one. Dogfighting in the Hornet has been a struggle for Tim. He's got to learn what we're actually trying to teach here, as opposed to just take off the airplane and fly it in circles. 
there's a point in time when he has to do something to defend or to threaten. He's got to do something better. He's already had a couple of failed flights, and this is the same mission that tripped up some of the other students. Air combat maneuvers. Three jets in the air. The two versus one fight. And if you've got two guys beating up on one, you expect the fight to be over fast. Bring it on. Experienced fighters get into position, line up the sights, and kill in under 30 seconds. Students take longer than that. Just deciphering good guy from bad. With left not o'clock very high. But how long is too long? Air Force studies show in a two versus one fight, in the first 45 seconds, you have a five to one chance of killing the bad guy. Six two, press. All right, who's doing that? Right now, right below us is the bad guy. All right. Tim's been fighting for a minute and a half. Six one, roll out now. Let's get down. Fighting this long, his chance of surviving drops to one to one. Continue. But finally, he reaches for that chance, edging in to make the kill. His radar and shoot cues line up. But he doesn't pull the trigger. His chance is gone. And now it's getting dangerous. For Tim. Tim's now dragged out the fight past two minutes. His chances completely reverse. Now it's Tim who has a five to one chance of dying in the clouds. When the fight goes this long, even your lead is begging to be put out of his misery. Oh, for the love of God, shoot us. On this mission, the clock ran down, taking Tim's chances of success with it. All sweaty, manly looking. <laughs> it wasn't a stellar trip. No, I think I could have did a lot better. That's kind of my gut feeling. And, uh, yeah, let's have to wait and see. He won't have to wait long. Amram, Amram, Amram. Shoot, 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 shoot. shoot. This is real time. Those aren't shots Tim took. They're ones he should have taken. So all that time, right, you did that two-circle fight. He didn't shoot you, and he could have. He gives you his tail position, so to speak. You put a radar on him, you get a weapon system, you get everything, and you don't take the trigger. Any reason why you chose not to take it? Just didn't see it or didn't look right or what was going on? What was going in your head? Yeah, I have to look at the tape, see what was going on at that point, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe I was trying to keep tabs on that, see if make sure I was locked up this right guy. So what do you need to be doing earlier at this stage? Getting in there. You need to kill faster. Tim is on that thin line between pass and fail. In all honesty, I don't know which way I'm going to go with this one yet, but I'm going to think on it. I'm going to go talk to standards and see what they think on this one, okay? Tim will have to wait for a ruling from the standards officer. He has two failures on his record already. One more could bury him. On the ice, Tim Coffin's got it all. He's fast on his feet. 
knows when to jump in, and pulls the trigger every chance he gets. Which is why his instructors can't figure out how come Tim can't put those skills together in the air. I know Tim loves the game of hockey. And he's, he's very skilled. Reading the ice, getting to a position, getting there fast. Those are all things you'd need to do in the fighter pilot uh, business as well. But Tim won't be in this business much longer. If his instructors label his last flight a failure. He's not fighting the jet all that well. Um, and I think a lot of that is just because he's working so hard trying to assimilate all the information and it's just not all being assimilated. Long story short, basically his bucket is, is absolute full. So I come to you with the question of, do we want to go down that road to potentially cause a time concern? Students only get so many hours flying time to finish the course, and Tim is running out of hours to repeat failed flights. I think if we do fail him on this trip, it could be a foregone conclusion that he's going to fail the next one, and, you know, that'll be the end of his fighter career. So I think we'll give him... Uh, suitably low grade based on his performance today however um i think we will send him on his solo so you have to be careful too in how you present it to him mm. don't say dude you got lucky you scraped through you got to buy or whatever just say no. you know what we talked about it and we are very confident that you're going to go up and do well oh absolutely no no i'm, I'm not so going to tell him he's an ass no no i know <laughs> but it's just kind of like he's going to be just hanging by a thread and we want to show him that you know what we talked about it we got confidence that you're going to go up and do it and he'll then he'll go, whew, all right, yeah, I can do this, you know. Yeah. Is Neil in down here? Uh, he went that way. That way? Uh, he went that way. Bathroom or our area, one of the two. Right around. Neil. Yes. Yes. The good news is, you're going to. All right? Okay. So Phil and I talked about it. The things that are issues are not safety. So there was never any concern, and we and I briefed that in the trip, yeah. right? So what we're thinking is, instead of causing you the hassle of having one of us in your trunk going blah, 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 we'll see if maybe it helps you to just have, you know, Tim in charge with nobody in the back going, dude, you should have done this, right? Yeah. So look at the stuff we talked to. Your card's in your box. Have a read through it. That's exactly a repeat of what you and I said. And just really sit down tonight, chair fly off. Okay, what would I do here? What makes sense here? And really, there's only those two or three key things, okay? Okay. And clean those up tomorrow and finish the solo and move on to the other shit, all right? Yeah, no problem at all. All right, thanks. Cheers, man. You want to feel Feels good. <laughs> it's pretty uh, nerve wracking just kind of sitting in that another phase brief, kind of with that on my mind. You know, it's pretty pissed off with a couple things but like on the flight not as close to the debrief but you know a couple things that you know mistakes I normally never make and you know it's just no excuse for doing it you know yeah. fix them for next time go on the solo and you know just get better as time goes by Every day for the past six months, Riel Erickson has come home to study the manuals. But this time, she's studying her options. Several times now, this course has delivered a knockout punch to her confidence. I'm having issues here. Touchdowns that were closer to smackdowns. Oh, that pissed me off. Yeah, just landing this thing is going to be a challenge, I think. The night formation landing that nearly turned fatal. I have control. You have control. We were probably one full oscillation from being completely out of control on the runway. Stare at him. Let it snag the lock. Then, more recently... There you go. Roll out, look for him. A couple of badly botched missions. 
I was like, do I really want to fight? You know, I had to sit down and think on the good things, like, is this something I want to do? And kind of when I really thought about it, I was like, yeah, this is, this is, it's who I am now. So I definitely, this is where I want to go, and I don't care what I have to do to get there. I'll do it. But that commitment means nothing unless she passes the next mission. There's so much riding on it, the squadron asks the camera crew to stay clear of her till it's over. After the flight, it's a tense walk back, waiting for the instructor's verdict. We had some good shots out there, some uh, other shots that were probably good in combat, uh, maybe one that was maybe just uh, a bad lock. And then min time to kill, yeah, well, we were, we were pressuring the bandit, and that's what you wanted to do. So good uh, comms all day, good fight setups uh, all day. Questions for me? No. Oh. Good job. Ooh. I'll leave you the tapes, and I'll write you your card. Sound Great. good? Sounds good. It was a must-pass mission, and she made it. Good times. That trip was actually a lot of fun, and I was starting to see stuff. So I just feel like there's so much more to learn, and it's fun. So of course, then I want to be like, I want to go and learn it. <laughs> I'm essentially just like going defense. defense well, you are. But, We're always defense. Yeah. Everything is always. The same. It's just one small step in a long road, and it will take a series of solid flights to convince her instructors that Riel is really moving forward. When a horse throws you down, you can walk away for good or get right back in the saddle. And Tim Coffin didn't get this far by being a quitter. He barely made it through his last mission, and this time, he'll be flying solo. There's a lot at stake, and his instructors are rooting for him. He'll either get a good initial shot, in which case it'll be over in a heartbeat, and we can do another one of these, or it'll give him a bit more engaged time. It'll be a 15-second fight. Good. Sounds good. He doesn't stand a chance. Hey, Nailing. That doesn't answer. It's us against this, right? I think he understands it. I think he understands everything. He can recite all the right answers in the brief, knows his stuff cold. So I don't think it's a learning issue. What the issue with Tim is spare capacity. Ninety-nine percent of the time, a pilot will find nothing suspect on his pre-flight checks. But this morning, Tim Coffin spots a problem. Ice frost on the... There's a thin coat of frost on the wings. Light surfaces? Yeah. Flight control. It's barely visible, but icing can radically alter the aerodynamics of the wings so they can no longer generate lift. Yeah. Will that hurt your performance? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna double check with uh, the guys inside, just to make sure. Don't screw up the solar, eh? Problem is, it's still early in the season, and they haven't broken out the de-icer yet. The crew is banking on solar power. You can see as soon as the sun hits it, it's coming right off, so... Yeah, just sitting here when you're flapping yeah. back up. By the time you get started... Okay. And rotate, and even actually when you do your walk around, just come back. Within minutes, the sun has taken care of the crew's problems. Now it's up to Tim to take care of his. Right 
Tim Coffin is flying a combat training mission solo, and he's got his hands full. Five one engage. Five two press. Alpha five one hostile hostile. He's trying to stay in the fight, and trying to save his chances of staying in the fighter program. There we are. There we are. Five two five two. Repositioning low. Valid. Shot valid. Tim gets a good shot off and repositions for another. He succeeds in locking on the target, but the onboard computer won't let him take the shot. Oh, shoot cue. Without a shoot cue, he can't release his weapons. Even though he's clearly within range of the bandit. Five two, televisual. Ah. Repositioning. He maneuvers the jet around to try again. There we are. But the problem persists. What the f Tim tries one weapon after another, but still no shoot cue, and no idea why. Uh, and terminate, terminate on five two. I'm not sure if it was me or the jet, but I uh, had some problems just getting the, uh, I got the lock itself, but actually getting the weapons off. The problem was not with the plane. It was with the pilot. Tim neglected to box sim, switch the jet's computer to simulation mode. And he didn't correct that mistake, even after hearing the reminder every rookie gets on takeoff. My one master arm safe the SIM box is weapons to check the The SIM box controls most of the weapons on board. When it's turned on, a pilot can see these symbols, including the crucial shoot cue. Because Tim didn't box SIM, he was unable to fire three of his four weapons. To see that he's not getting the symbology he wants through the entire mission, and not once getting on the radio and going, lead, I haven't bit got a single shoot cue, my symbology is not working, I don't know what's wrong, any ideas, right? Yeah. And then we probably would have, you got sim box? Oh. Yeah. I think for the level that the stage that he is at, yeah. he should have recognized that there's something wrong and sought to rectify that. Tim failed the flight, and his confidence is failing too. Yeah, I don't know. Just can't put two and two together, I guess. <laughs> Makes no sense. And if you've got time on your hands while you're in the cockpit, you don't think... Tim's deputy commanding officer knows just how that feels. I've been where he is. You know, I've been against the wall, so... Whether we want to admit it or not, most of us have been up against walls. And it's the people who survive those stressful periods who can use that to their advantage to become solid in this business. And you won't do it all. You'll never fly the perfect mission. And that's not what it's about. Okay, but it's trying to achieve excellence. Make sense? Yeah, it does. Tim has just one last chance to prove that he deserves to be here. Go home, they tell him. Don't cram. Chair fly that mission. Then come back tomorrow and ace it. I guarantee you, he will be laying in bed tonight, counting the bumps in the ceiling, you know, just thinking about this, and there's nothing you can do to, to tone that down. If he doesn't show some drastic improvement on the next one, then he may very well be heading down a different career path. He's got to make it happen on this next one. That's next time on Jetstream.